Hello, Wisconsin DECA. My name is Levi. I'm your Vice President of Membership Development, and I'm here today with Max Olson. He is a Product Development Coordinator at Kohl's, and we will be going through a couple of trends in the retail merchandise series today. All right, let's get started. In retail merchandising, blank is the best thing since sliced bread. Um, I would have to say a very vague uh, word for that would be technology. Um, technology has significantly changed the way the retail industry is working and how it's going to evolve in the future. Um, a prime example of this would be e-commerce. Um, e-commerce is a expanding channel. It's expanding like rapid fire right now for the retail industry. Um, a lot of people fear that e-commerce will take over brick and mortar uh, retail, but I am a firm believer that it is not. I think it is going to consistently um, improve the physical brick and mortar retail atmosphere. Um, and it also, it's been a huge uh, assistance with things from managing merchandise um, to reporting, uh, tracking inventory. Um, so it's definitely technology has been a huge, huge uh, key um, utility for uh, retail. Okay. Um, now, what do you see up and coming right now that will be important for the next 10 years, whether it be technology related or not? Yeah, I think tying back to what I originally said um, with uh, technology really assisting brick and mortar, um, a huge um, key word right now is omnichannel. And I think uh, what a lot of readings are trying to do right now is really um, attract to the millennial customer and the, they're finding the millennial customer is really uh, a true omni-channel customer. So they're not only going to a physical store and they're not only going online, they're really looking for that seamless experience between online and the stores okay, and so, also now on mobile devices. Okay, so omni-channel is they use both channels, they'll go to the store, but they'll also look online, they'll use the app, that kind of yep. thing? Okay. Yeah, Omnichannel is kind of like the overarching theme. So it it's basically starts from when the consumer is maybe online doing research or shopping competitors from, you know, using their phone to navigate to the store to the, the whole in-store experience. So retailers now have a lot of in-store tools that and apps on their smartphones in addition to kiosks and iPads and different sort of tools for store associates. Mm -hmm. um, and that can help provide information while they're shopping in the store. Um, people can use their phones to check out now and pay. Um, and then also, it's it also goes back to the post shopping experience too. Mm -hmm. Customers can re write reviews um, if they have a complaint or you know a positive feedback on a product or a service they had in the store. Um, companies and retailers are really using social media as well as a huge way to to. Uh, maintain communication with their customers, making sure their customers are happy. Um, so I would say that the overarching theme of Omnichannel is just a huge buzzword in the retail industry right now. And as I said before, the initial fear of e-com business booming so rapidly was that it was going to take over brick and mortar, mm -hmm. but it's really just assisting brick and mortar. And yes, retailers are looking back at their physical footprint, store footprints, and, you know, they're not opening several stores anymore, but one thing to keep in mind is that we're, they're just looking at different ways to utilize their brick and mortar stores. Okay. So whether they be fulfillment centers, so customers can buy online, pick up in the store, mm -hmm. um, or as many distribution centers. So if a customer buys something and wants it shipped to them, is it more cost efficient to ship it from a store that's close to them instead of a special distribution center? Um, so there's all a bunch of different ways that retailers are really experimenting um, with their store footprints, uh, testing out new concepts, smaller format stores, specialty stores, and um, off-price retailers are really in a, a boom right now, uh, especially with, with sales because they're finding that customers, especially in that millennial age group, um, they just want to cut to the chase. They want the best price on something. They don't want to have to clip coupons. They don't want to have to wait for sales. Um, so that's another format that uh, retailers are really looking into as well. Okay. Now, what resources would you recommend DECA members using in order to keep ahead of their competition, especially in Retail March? Um, I think it's definitely uh, one of 
my biggest resources is the NRF Smart Brief. So the NRF is the National Retail Federation, and even just browsing their website, they have a ton of news articles um, and just up-to-date information on the retail industry in general, um, different companies, different strategies, technologies, things like that. And they have a newsletter you can subscribe to and it emails you every day, just kind of new things that are going on uh, in the industry. So that's a huge resource that I recommend. I also recommend just looking on, um, you know, regular business websites like Forbes, uh, Yahoo Business, just uh, cruising through the section because a lot of them do focus on retailers and you can even drill down to retailers. Um, but it's always changing. The retail industry will never change. Um, even at my own job, every day is different. Um, so it's good to just stay up to date mm-hmm. because things can literally change overnight. Okay. Now, what two or three words or phrases describing activities or business practices are really key in this industry? I would say the key phrase would be um, to just build and maintain relationships with your counterparts. Um, sorry. So... <laughs> Basically, when you're working with multiple cross-functional partners, which in the retail industry you do, you have you know several different aspects of corporate life and store life, and building and maintaining those relationships is essential because you're working with these people every day, and at the end of the day, you're trying to drive business and make the company money. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> having a good relationship with your counterparts will really help um, <clears throat> be successful, will really help you be successful. Um, And if there's anything that, for instance, like I work in product development, so I develop all this product and then try to convince the buyers to buy it. Mm -hmm. So if I maintain a good relationship with my buyers and I see this really good innovational idea and I have that that trust built with my buyers, then it's going to be a lot easier to present the idea to them and try to persuade them to buy it or test it in store. Okay. Now, what is the most important thing based on all of the new information that you've given today? What's the most important thing that a student should do in a retail merchandising role play? Um, I think when I've been judging other students in role plays, um, the one thing that I notice is students have these great ideas. And a lot of times they don't necessarily seem excited about them or have the supporting evidence um, or research to back up their ideas. So I think one thing is when you have these great ideas and you're super passionate about it, make sure you show that. Make sure you show that in your face. You're smiling. Um, You're getting the judges' feedback, engaging with them. And then also supporting your idea with evidence. You know, it is a role play. It's a made-up role play. So if you have evidence or show that you have evidence or um, any sort of background or research, financial statistics, anything like that, you can make it up and present it with your idea to back it up. And I wouldn't know if you're telling the truth or not, um, but it really translates really well to the real life um, retail industry because when you come up with these ideas and present them to upper management, that's the first thing they're going to ask you is where did you get this from? How is this going to impact our financials? Um, Any sort of of evidence or um, knowledge um, research that you've done on the topic Uh, really helps back up your idea and make it more credible. And then um, once you present the evidence and the research that you've done with your idea, it's really important to close the deal. Because if you're super excited about this and you show that you've been working on this idea or concept and you have the the background knowledge on it, um, just show that you have a plan. You have a plan of action and you're already starting on the plan of action. And it doesn't really give the option, the judge the option to... uh, turn down your proposal. So um, I think those are the, the three main things. Be excited, have uh, research and background, and close the deal. All right. Thank you so much. I'm sure these tips will help so many of our students make it onto state and hopefully get on stage at ICDC. Thank you so yeah, much, Max Olson. No problem.